Hey, what's up, you guys? Josh Atia out here in Singapore, and thank you so much for joining me on the Night Owl podcast. I really appreciate you guys. Um, it's been a lovely couple of weeks, and I've been enjoying the process of getting to know new people. And in the course of which I'm getting to know, you know, how people believe relationships should be. I'm getting to know all the kinds of situationships that are up and about in、uh, Singapore, and、um, I'm starting to get more and more familiar with the mindset of young people here as they go on about dating and stuff. So, for the most part, people are really in situationships, y'all. They are trying to do the best they can with just getting their needs met, and even then, it's not even like full-on needs. It's when the need arises, they try to meet the need. So it's almost like when there's an itch, they Scratch it and then they keep on going. So instead of trying to figure out why the itch came up or what it is that you know that keeps popping up or whatever, why it is, where it is, where it comes from, they're just kind of quick fix when it happens and they go on about their business. So it's interesting and it's been very eye opening and it's pulled up a lot of my own beliefs. So once upon a time. <clears throat> I believe that in a relationship, you are the other person's other half. You complete each other. It's it's what everyone believed at one point, right? But I have kind of、um, grown out of that phase, and I realized that that's not really practical, nor is it sustainable. So, yeah, back in the day, I used to believe that you were the other person's counterpart. You were the completion, right? Two souls in sorry, one soul in two bodies, all of that stuff. Soulmate, other half, all that, and I really believe that once you find somebody, that you're supposed to be all that they need you to be. So guess what? I would shut down and remold and become what it was that they needed me to be, forgetting the part that I was who I was, which made them catch their eye in the first place, and then I changed everything. So of course I was doomed to fail, and I wasn't thinking about it like that because I thought, hey. I saw my mom change everything that she was because I definitely saw the difference between who she was when my dad was around and who she was when my dad wasn't around. So I figured that was normal. This is my paradigm of the world at the time. So <clears throat> after two wonderfully failed、uh, relationships, I realized that no, I can't be all that you need me to be all the time. You need to give me space to to you know come towards me sometimes. So at that point, the paradigm shifted, and I took on some advice from my great aunt. And she said, "Look." Love is like tug of war. Sometimes you pull, they come towards you, and sometimes they pull, and you come towards them. And it's not always guaranteed how things actually work out. But if you give each other the space to pull on each other, and you come towards each other, it's a little bit balanced. And I guess that's the way her marriage worked. Because let's face it, she was married for over fifty years. Um, and they were happy in the house together, and they were very sweet. They were constantly picking on each other in that you know, I love you, but I'm just going to pick at you anyway kind of way. And it was very endearing. So it was very different from my mom and dad's relationship, where I never saw them be affectionate ever.、Um, my dad kind of ordered my mom around the house, and that's what I thought life was. That's the way it was, or whatever. Even when they were in public, it wasn't affectionate at all. They didn't really hold hands or kiss or touch or anything, and it was like,、mm, okay, sure. So I just left it be. I figured that's just the way it was. So when I got into my own relationships, I figured, hey, you know, I just cater to my man, serve him, make sure he's well taken care of, all that shit. And then I realized that none of my needs were getting met because I had filled the room with all of his needs to the point that I didn't have room to ask for my needs nor get them met at all. And、um, at that point, right? What does what is the need that my man fulfills at all? Like, what is the point of him being around? So. Again, paradigm shifted. Even though I left room for my second relationship, for you know, for me to be able to ask him for help every so often, but whenever I did, he would make it seem like it was just a big to do, and I was asking too much of him. And how dare I put that extra rep- responsibility on him? I'm here to help him, and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll go back to square one and do what I've always done, which is cater to the guy in the relationship. Nowadays, I don't really have anyone to practice with or even heal any of that stuff with. So when I do come across, you know. Um, those random moments where you think you connect with somebody and you feel like maybe there's a spark there, maybe there's a connection, maybe there's something more than just a random conversation.、Um, I get the opportunity to heal little bits and pieces. And what I've learned from all of that is the idea of non-attachment, which changes everything all over again for relationships. So forget all the situationships and forget all the scratching or itching that needs scratching. I'm talking about. I'm going to be all that I can be in every moment. So this is not really the past or the future that I'm looking forward to or basing things off of. It's more like, right now in this moment, we're having a conversation, and I'm enjoying the conversation. So I'm going to enjoy it as long as it lasts. And when it's over, I'm going to wash my hands and not expect to hear from these people again.
And in that regard, I think it kind of is a throwback to one of these earlier podcast episodes where I talked about being an asshole and how that seems to get everything that you want when you're an asshole. It's more like you're not attached to the outcome. You're not expecting anything to happen out of it. You just are yourself and then you go on about your business and let the universe bring things back full circle to you if that's what it's meant to do. You know what I mean? So this idea of non-attachment is trying at times. And as much as I would like to not expect anything in return, I do need to check my ego a lot. I need to realize that, hey, I'm doing this because I want to do this, not because I want a response in return. I am showing love and affection because I want to show love and affection. That's who I am. That's my nature. And it's not because I'm trying to win somebody over or put in work for the long haul. It's not like that at all. It's change. And as wild and strange as it is, somehow... I feel better about who I am when I'm in front of people. I still don't really ask for my needs to be met. I still do cater in some ways. But this means that my relationships, friendships, platonic familial relationships or otherwise, get the best of me every time. And when I let go, once that interaction is over with, I wash my hands, I clear my energy, and I do whatever I need to do for me. And it's been the most difficult but fulfilling practice. Can you call it a practice? I don't know. But it's been strange and it's been upsetting at times. But I feel better about the way I interact. I really do make sure that it is unconditional love that I'm putting out there. Of course, like who wouldn't want your needs to be met? Who wouldn't want to be noticed because you are who you are? Who wouldn't want to be remembered because you did something? But that's not why I'm doing them. And that should never be why I'm doing things. I should never be doing things with the hope that someone remembers that I did them did something for them. That defeats the whole purpose. It's almost like charity at that point. And then you need your name in the credits below because you, you contributed. Hey, I need people to know. That's not conditional, unconditional love. That's a business transaction. And I refuse to fall into that trap of, I'm doing this because I want something in return. There is no tit for tat here. And I don't want it like that. If someone decides to spend more time with me, it will be of their own volition, not because I wrangled them into a position where they feel obligated. That's the last thing I want. I don't want anyone to feel obligated to be around me. I don't want anyone to feel like they have to reciprocate. You reciprocate if you want to. But in the meantime, I'm going to teach myself not to expect anything. So then... If anything happens, I am surprised genuinely and I can really appreciate when someone puts in the effort. You know that disappointed feeling you get when you you think something's going to happen and then it doesn't happen, you're kind of pissed off. I don't want that ever. I've been in that place so many times in my life and I don't, I don't like that place. I don't enjoy that place and it really is a bitter, bitter place to be. So I am hoping that this new paradigm actually works out. Mostly because right now, like, I'm not in a relationship, right? So right now, it's every interaction for itself, and I'm doing the best I can, but I always get to come home. I always get to wash my hands, come home, clear my energy, and be by myself again. I always get to recharge. So if I was ever in a position where I was living with somebody or in a long-term relationship, I would like to think that at the end of the night, when we both go to bed, that we are in a good place, we've done the best we can by each other, And we can really rest and recharge and get back up in the morning and tackle the day together where we have your work and my work and then our work together. And there is balance and there is space to ask for help and there is space to give help and there is space for both of us to grow in whatever direction we need to because we're both safe and supported. So as lofty as that ideal is, and right now I'm single, so I can put this into practice, I hope that this actually works out if I ever end up in a relationship. If anyone is ever bold enough to want to date me, I'm hoping that I can still keep this up because this has been helpful and it does feel healthy and it feels like I've reduced the amount of pressure on myself. I've reduced the amount of chaos and strife and stress in my life. Because I've gotten rid of the expectations that would put me in a position where I am upset if I don't get my way or upset if I don't get a specific reaction. Because I've learned to let go and allow. And maybe that's the divine feminine in me. Maybe that's the biggest lesson that I've ever had to learn. Because yeah, I have a lot of masculine in me. I'm very action oriented. I got to do something about whatever the problem is. I'm really fixer and, you know, uh, solution oriented. 
but the feminine is more nature and nurture and allow. And it's been so hard to let go and not touch it and not push it and not force it and not manipulate it so that it has its own room to grow. I want people around me who want to be around me. No obligations, no attachments, no, oh, because you did, so I must. No. You're around me because you want to be around me. You're around me because I am what you need at the time. You're around me because you see me, you notice me. I'm not just a body. I'm not just a face. I'm not just a name. I'm not just warmth beside you. I am all of me and you see all of me. And that perhaps is the only expectation that when you're with me, you see me. You know it's me. I'm not a placeholder. I'm not a filler for the moment. You see me. So this non-attachment, yeah, I don't know how I feel about it, but so far so good. I would love to hear your thoughts and comments. If you think I'm completely off my rocker, please let me know. Um, But in the meantime, you guys, yeah, non-attachment, no expectations. You do it because you want to do it. You're there because you want to be there. You don't do anything you don't want to do. You say no and you let it go. You say no, and if they ask for justification, you let them know exactly why, in as much grace as you can muster from your tongue, and then you let it go. Let me know what you think. I'll catch you again soon.